the offer was a seller finance offer. So I think that is a very valuable tool right now in today's market. Pretty much the it's an investment property, put an offer on and long story short, investors not going to buy it with today's bank rates because it's not going to cash flow. Hello, and thank you for joining us today on the Gentle Art of Crushing It show, where we focus on learning and sharing with our listeners all there is to know about how to create success in our lives. This show stands on the shoulders of giants. Our mission is to empower and inspire our listeners to create the life of their dreams whilst having a blast in the process. Let's celebrate life together. Welcome to the show. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining another episode of The Gentle uh, Art of Crushing It. On today's episode, we have the pleasure of interviewing Zach Croft. And so super excited to dive into your story, Zach, and get to know you better. Um, with that being said, would you please start us off by telling us a little bit about you, your you know background and um, you know what you're up to these days? And please also just include something that most people wouldn't know about you. Absolutely. Thank you, Doug. So my name is Zach Croct. I live in Austin, Texas currently. My background is photography, specifically commercial photography, but I actually don't do much of that these days. My focus has been high volume photography. And what we do in my company is we focus on youth sporting tournaments. So we'll go out to youth sporting tournaments nationwide, cover on-site team photos and action photos, and provide parents with awesome ph photographic memories of their children. Um, something you probably didn't know about me is I'm really into rock climbing. Um, so I've been rock climbing for the majority of my life, um, and my adult life, since you know, as a baby, I would climb on the outside of the staircase on the wrong side and drive my parents crazy. But um, really, in a rock climbing, I go about three or four times a week. That's awesome. Now, is there like you know a lot of opportunities to do so in the Austin area, or do you have, like an indoor gym that you frequent? Yes, yes, I am mostly indoor these days. Um, there's an indoor gym five minutes down the road from me called Austin Boulder Project. Wow, score. Yeah, I've uh, seen one of those one time, but you know, that whole environment makes a lot more sense to me because you can hit it, you know, any time of the year, right? And um, you don't have to, you don't have to deal with uh, the extreme heat that Austin gets from time to time, right? Absolutely. I think, I think I really enjoy it because it's a, it's a body puzzle at the end of the day, you know, you trying to figure out which way you need to stretch your body. So it's working your mind, it's working your, your body and they have to work together to get the goal accomplished. So I think that's why I really enjoy it. It's a very problem solving exercise. And, you know, I've done a little bit of it, just sort of messing around real low level. It's surprising to me how much endurance is required. So super, uh, you know, good exercise, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. So let me ask you this fun question. You know, um, do you mind sharing with us where and how you found success as you define it? Where do I find success? How do I define it is the question? Yeah, but kind of both. Like you could start by saying how, how, do, how do you personally define success? Because that's really important, right? And then where you feel like you've discovered it for yourself. I would define success as it's kind of hard. Um, you know, the, the peg post always moves at the end of the day. And success to me is really just the journey. Um, I think – being on the journey, being in the right direction and feeling in the right direction is success to me at the end of the day. So I think the, the goalpost is always moving and that's just part of the being entrepreneur, being goal oriented is like, hey, once you hit this, now you're going here, now you're going here. But I think it's success is not stopping, never giving up and um, always being a student and learning. Um, so how have I found success is the next question. Um, so really just like education, I think is, you know, like what I just said about like never stop learning, always being a student. Um, the role I'm in now, I never expected to be in. I went to school to be a commercial photographer and, you know, the career path up until very few years ago was, hey, I'm going to be a photographer. I'm going to shoot for the biggest brands and corporations and do advertising. And um, that's not what I'm doing now. I'm in a leadership role. So right now it's like, what I'm learning is leadership and communication and public speaking and everything else that you need to run a company. So I, yeah, I think always being a student is where I've found the most success and being open to those possibilities. 
Yeah. And, you know, I, I really love that a lot. And I kind of want to unpack it a little bit because, you know, Jason G's coaching is where we met. And um, one of the things that Jason teaches is, you know, the fact that we can have our goal out here and um, we might have one set way of accomplishing that goal. And that may not be that the way that it unfolds upon us to actually hit that goal. So being open to other opportunities, you know, um, stuff that may come your way. It's kind of like you said, when you started out, you didn't plan on this niche that you've actually discovered. We talked a bit about it before a few months ago and sounds like a, you know, a super uh, profitable and successful niche. Um, and, and that was something that unfolded to you, right? Through your, you know, hunger for growth, hunger for success, hunger for learning, um, would you agree with that and add anything to it? No, I, I, I agree. I think you never know where your journey is going to take you. And what I'm doing right now is probably not what I'm going to be doing in 10 to 15 years. And I think it's really the skills that you learn along the way will bring you to that next step. So I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Would you mind sharing with us, you know, one um, or more of your favorite successes that either you solely created or were part of a team that created it? There's so many. Um, when I read this question before, there's one that came to mind, but I think one more important one has been on this software development journey I've been on. So we've been developing software internally and just seeing like a problem within my industry and my business of like, Hey, like we have this X, Y, and Z problem. And then 18 months later, we have a software solution that is totally custom and solves 90% of those problems. It's just like, I would call that a success. So it's allowed us to grow 50% year over year, um, just a, a revenue perspective. So it's, and it's, we're, we're not stopping. So it's really, open up the floodgates for a lot of growth. And yeah, I think that's been one of the biggest successes has been developing software. It's been two years on part of it, 18 months on another part, and now they're working together and it's just phenomenal the results we're seeing. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, um, sort of like the the robots of the auto manufacturer plants from, you know, back in the 70s, the software can handle a lot of the stuff that, you know, um, people can be doing and, you um, even more efficiently and is there are you kind of like uh, is ai a part of that at all or it's just no yeah. i mean it, it's really like it's just eliminating errors in a stressful environment like human error so we used to have a lot of issues with misprinting the number of prints we need to print for an order or spelling and team name wrong or yeah just putting something in a wrong pot of proof or print in a wrong pile. So really just eliminating a lot of the human errors. So making the job a lot easier uh, for our staff members in the field. That's awesome. And in some of those mistakes probably were costly as well, right? They all add up at the end of the day. One of our biggest challenges as a company is that we are only open for about 20 hours a week. We're in person every Saturday and Sunday. So we have to fit as much business as possible in those 20 hours. Um, we are, we've developed an online store that we're launching this week. So we'll be open 24 um, seven. But yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a it very logistics and fast paced environment where we need to turn around images and products within a one hour time period, pretty much when the team starts their game to the team the time they're finished, we need to have their orders printed, sold and ready to be picked up after that game. And we repeat that process for hundreds of teams every single week. Yeah, that sounds like a challenge and a half right there. And um, so so that's awesome. Huge uh, problem solving skills is what it sounds like. And so when it comes to the software development, you know, what would you say is one of the most valuable lessons that you learned from from that experience? You know, I think there's a lot. When I before I got into it, I, t I was told it's going to take much longer and much more expensive than I would think it was. And I already thought it was really expensive. So, you know, the first batch of software we, we built, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is what we're going to budget towards it. And then now six months later, we, not six months later, about it, nine months later, we were like, okay, we're going to need to do another batch. It's like 80% of the cost, original cost. So it's like, you know, almost double the original cost we've budgeted out for it. Um, but really just patience, I think it's like, 
we've been having these issues for years and it's really frustrating in the moment. It's like, hey, we're building the software. It's six months away. It's nine months away. It's three months away where we, we have a solution for this problem. We're building it, but we're still facing that problem day to day. And it's really frustrating to see. It's like, okay, we've already mapped out the solution, but the delivery of that solution is just taking a lot longer than we would like. So patience, I would say. Yeah. You, you know, it's interesting. My dad used to always say to me, patience is a virtue. And um, it's such a hard skill to master, if you will. And I don't know if like a human can master it, but we definitely all have like a lot of room to grow with it. And I could see how that scenario in particular would really require a lot of patience, faith, and then also like expectancy that this is going to be successful. You'll be victorious at the end of the day. So long view, right? And, um, but yeah, I love that. Yeah, I would say doubt definitely has creeped in a few times and, you know, is it present? Yeah, absolutely. It would have to, you know, otherwise you're not human, right? I think that's, that's one of the interesting things that one of my friends shared with me recently is uh, he was saying that his coach um, shared with him that, you know, what people who create success in their life have, you know, most in common is that they expect these goals, these targets, they expect them to happen. So continually going like, I'm getting beat up and we're down in the dumps and this thing looks like it's impossible to turn around, but we expect to turn it around. So let's get focused back on that. And, you know, what does that require? Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Now I'm going to kind of, you know, shift it, the conversation a little bit and ask you if you would mind sharing with us some of the more incredibly, you know, difficult challenges that you faced in your life and, you know, what you learned from either one, or if you want to share multiple, what you learned from those challenges. In my life or business or both or all the above? All the above, whichever is, whichever kind of comes top to mind for you. I talk about the time I was in college uh, a few years a couple years ago. This was probably 2016, around 2016. And I got extremely sick. I had an allergic reaction to a bee sting and I had difficulty eating um, or I didn't have difficulty eating. I had difficulty keeping food down. So every time I ate something, I would throw it up. And I'm not a very big guy, but I lost about 30 pounds um, I over the course of a month and a half. I just couldn't eat anything and just throwing up every single day. So and I had that bee sting actually happened while I was driving. So I was just driving down the road and a bee stung me in the back and then blew up one hospital on this. And, and I had a extreme anxiety to even drive or leave the house. Um, it was something I've never experienced before. Um, so it, it was like, I was losing weight. I couldn't eat. I couldn't leave the house. It was all mental. Like I couldn't go to classes. Um, and my mom came and lived with me in college, which is a little awkward if you can imagine you're you're 20 years old and your mom's living with you in your college roommate's house living on your couch and I really appreciate her for for doing that but yeah it was a very difficult time in my life trying to navigate that process and I think I bring it up is because yes there was a physical aspect of it like I couldn't eat and would throw up and not gain weight and really like was lightheaded all the time but it was also the mental mental thing block of like I feel like I'm going to die every time I leave the house because there's going to be the, a bee that flies into my car and stings me again. And I'm going to, you know, have my epi, my epi pen with me now, um, all the time. So it's like, you know, yeah. So I had a lot of fear and I overcame that. I think that's one of the more challenging parts I've experienced in my life. And there's, there's been many, but that one definitely sticks out. It was a time that an experience that really, had me thinking about like, what is, what is life? What is happening? Why is this happening to me? And what is this trying to teach me? And it definitely taught me that it's all mindset at the end of the day. It's really, you know, what you think is what you feel and it'll affect what you do. So I think, yeah, it's really, really is a big mindset lesson for me. One of the first big mindset lessons for me about, you know, anxiety and getting over, fears and anxiety. Yeah. That's what I got. Um, yeah. I think another one was actually this year in the business side of things, we had a massive staffing change. Um, we were, we, we looked at our books year over year from 2021 to 2022 and we declined um, a little bit, you know, slightly about 5% decline in sales. And I was just like, 
this isn't right. Like we, we, we've done so much more effort. We've done so much. And then, um, so it's like, really, it was like inflation ate up a lot of our, uh, margin at the end of the day. So we're like, okay, we need to raise our prices. We need to change our pay scale because we were paying by the hour and we finally developed software where we can start paying people, uh, base plus commission. Um, we can easily track it by person. So did that. We had a totally restructure of our operations. You brought in someone, um, had to let them go. Uh, eventually, after a few months, if they just weren't the right fit, we had a very key team member leave because of bringing that other person in, and it wasn't a good fit. And they sold on walls, but I didn't. And um, I mean, this this whole year has been a whirlwind. But I'm really excited where we're at nine months later. I think it's definitely been the most challenging year in business by far this this year, 2023. And I think it's gotten a lot easier as we've progressed through the year and worked through so many problems. Um, and we are primed for probably another 50% or more growth next year with what we have set up going. So I'm excited. Score. Yeah. It was not to be excited about that. Um, there's so much to impact. I, I do want to try to touch on almost all of it. Um, so I'll try to remember, but for starters, um, I would say that I can sort of relate, um, to the anxiety that you felt after that, um, bee sting. Um, you know, I was in a, I was, I've been in a couple car accidents, right. But one, um, I remember afterwards not wanting to drive. And then I even remember for maybe even weeks afterward being on the freeway in the slow lane doing like 40 miles an hour. I was really freaked out. And, um, I think that, you know, right along with that is the mindset, the mentality. And you see this in sports injuries where you, 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 you sprain an ankle or, or break a bone or something like that. And then you go back to your sport of choice and you are way more timid than you had been right up before that moment. Um, and so the way that I remember sort of Tony Robbins explaining this is that one sort of, you know, um, giving in to the temptation of a negative thought or stinking thinking, like Zig Ziglar would say, leads to another, leads to another. You're on a downward spiral at that point. So you have to, you know, pull your head out of it at some point and start to choose, like the the path of progress, choosing, you know, positive attitude, beginning beginning to like, you know, say to ourselves that no, I actually want these dreams. I actually want these, and these are out here on the other side of my fear, which. Like, you know, you still have to walk through the fear. So, um, you know, kudos to you for doing that. That could be one of those things that happens to people that completely derails their lives. They could, it could lead to the end of their life or a very, you know, horrible existence. And you chose, you know, the, 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 um, the better path, right. For you. And I would just say the better path in general. So kudos to you because you didn't let that destroy you. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted to also touch on 2023. So for a lot of people that I talked to, it's been a really rough year and I guess you could say inflation, but other things, right. Um, so, um, and with that being said, you know, like, um, in, in real estate and in business, um, this is my belief in, in my understanding is that when we learn to, not only just survive during the hard times, tough markets, so on and so forth, but learn how to strive and excel in those tough times, we're going to be way better off for it. For, so when the market turns turns around, we're, you are going to be you know, super excelling at that point, right? So um, you know, I think that just looking at your projected uh, growth over the next year, another 50%, that's huge and insane. And, you know, everybody knows that that's like huge, massive. Right. And so to have gone in like, wait, something's off here. Let's figure it out as a team, whatever the solution is, that's what we're choosing. And then implementing that right along with everything else that y'all are doing your software. And, um, that's that, 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 you know, just speaks, um, boldly of great leadership, a great team, and um that y'all have a very bright future right so i love that yes yeah i think i i agree with that i mean when everyone's fat and happy and dancing it's easy to get by but when the tide turns and there's more difficulty it makes you so much more efficient and better product better customer experience and overall a lot you know we, we've kind of seen that over the past you know i really started this business in 2019 
And then six months into COVID happened and then we had to start over. And then we, yeah, it's just been, it's been a lot of change, a lot of growth, but really just like seeing the tough times come the past last year and then this year, I think it, we've doubled down on our investment into technology and efficiency and customer experience. And it's, it's finally paying off. Um, but it's, it's a long game in the end. It's, you know, really thinking like what skills can we acquire now that will pay us in two or three years. And it's been, it's really cool to see like adopting that mindset two years ago and like, Oh yeah, I'm going to do this and learn this. Um, and then now it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Like that's finally started to pay off. And what I'm doing now is going to pay off in another few years. So it's definitely, it's definitely a long game. Yeah. That, that sort of, um, you know, reminds me of this other, uh, phrase that Tony Robbins says a lot is like, which is we overestimate what we can do in one year and underestimate what we do in five to 10. It's so true. If I go out there and start pull-ups, you know, a habit of pull-ups this week and I do it for four or five days in a row next week, there is a part of me, honestly, that is going to go, where are all my results? Why am I not past five pull-ups? And this isn't working. I'm quitting. Right. So like, again, back to patience. I think that, you know, that, that word there would just, or the, the word, the act of patience and strengthening our patient's muscle as a global population would pay huge dividends in, in, uh, you know, in, in everything. Right. So. Absolutely. Something I've kind of adopted this year to keep up with my physical fitness is a three minute plank. So I started a year doing every day, a three minute plank. It's something I have time for. It's something I could do anywhere, no weights or anything required. And I've been decent at it. I can't say I hit it every single day, but I would say 80% of the time. And, you know, when I first started doing it, three minute plank was forever. And I went the other day without stopping for six minutes. And it's nine months later, I'm able to double. Um, And I'm sure like maybe another nine months from now, I'm able to do 10 minutes. So yeah, it's just like, it feels like a long time when you're first starting out and it's going to take forever. But once you get that habit in and it's, it's second nature. Yeah. Planks are interesting because they don't seem like they're difficult and I would never bet, you know, against myself. But if I was to bet somebody that I can do three minutes right now, I'm probably going to lose money on that one. Right. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And it's, it's interesting what it does for your core. Right. So that's awesome. Sure. And I, and I think, uh, just the fact that you define something that, you know, you could, you always have time for, you can do it anywhere. Um, you know, these are sort of like life hacks that are, you know, I mean, worth their weight in gold. So, so that's awesome. I've got a fun question for you. And that sure. is if you were to take your mindset, everything, you know, now and bring that with you back to age 18, you know, what would you do if anything differently to fast track your success or up to where you're at now, or even surpass that? I think I'll first start with I'm really happy with the journey I've taken. I think um, I want to be here without, you know, the trials and tribulations to part things I've overcame. But if I had to take the mindset of those, I would I would probably surround myself with people who could mentor me. Um, I did have one Ralph who taught me my entire the business I do now. Um, he mentored me for five, I worked for him for five years, learned a lot, but I really think, you know, surrounding myself with a better mentor or working for them, I think would definitely fast track a lot of stuff that I know now, um, I think is really, really the key to the game is during that age period. It's like, you're impressionable. You can learn a lot. You can outwork physically outwork a lot of different people. So I think really surrounding yourself with people who you where you want to be they're they're at where you want to be in 10 years so you find that 30 30 old or 40 year old who's has 15 20 years of experience and get their wisdom is really what i would suggest so seek more wisdom seek more wisdom and i think you also mentioned something about you know so if we're dreaming bigger we will seek out mentors that are more successful which then will draw us up to you know a higher success level also right yes correct a concept that I've been, you know, um, sort of, I guess, just mulling around in my brain for like the last, I guess, year or so is that ex- for the exact same reasons or, or similar reasons that we, you know, define a criteria or a buy box for our real estate investments, we want to use that in other areas. So, like, where can we use that that will save us time so we're not spinning our wheels underwriting deals that don't fit our buy box, for example, or, 
Um, you know, but one of those one of those areas that I've defined is in mentorship. So there are, you know, hundred thousand heirs out there, there are millionaires out there, and there are billionaires out there. In every single level level, you're gonna find like less mentors, but you're there so there's still gonna be a plethora of mentors, even at the billion dollar level. So with that being said, why have I not begun my, you know, reaching out with billionaires yet? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's because I fairly recently uh, defined that, but I think that concept is is so powerful and important. Is mentors in choosing our mentors wisely, giving ourselves like, you know, the value. Like we have a lot of value to offer, and we have this amazing life. What are we going to do with it? Valuing ourselves, our time. And then, you know, obviously other people's, of course, you know, so. Yeah, I agree. And I've used that framework in other aspects. And the thing that's been helped me the most has actually been hiring lately. So, you know, you have the buy box of for real estate and you're like, hey, I want this deal. This location hits all these criteria. But for me, you know, I've been really on the hiring craze. And I think that's what's what's going to take me to the next level is hiring the right people and with the right skills and criteria. So. I, we started with our basic level of our hiring is called our team member. And we thought, okay, like what screening process can we do? Or what, you know, what interview questions do we need to ask? And that wasn't really the right question. It's like, what internally do we need to ask ourselves to know this is the right candidate? So we came up with three different things. Is this person outgoing? Is this person coachable? And do we think they are like nice to talk to or be good to talk to? And if we answered yes to those three things, we think we're having eighty percent success rate at the end of the day. So, how we did that is we've done video interviews. So they submit a video interview, and for just for the process of submitting a video of you talking to yourself on camera, you have to be outgoing. You have to be, you know, decently good at sales, and you have to be humble to do that. So that has filtered out ninety five percent of our applicants, and then the people who we get through that process who submit a good quality video present themselves well we have an 80 to 85% success rate. So I've been doing that for, we've done it really successfully for our basic level team member. And we're, now I'm trying to do it for management side. So it's a couple different questions I need to ask myself, but really just building that framework from working backwards has helped me tremendously. And that's, you know, you know, finding your buy box, but working backwards around of like, what questions do you need to ask yourself to be sure that this is the right person? Yeah, I love that. And, you know, a couple things that I pulled out of that is, you know, one, humility speaks to, is this person going to be handling customers well? Um, and you touched on um, customer service earlier. I think that's one area where all businesses, you know, should take a look at because you can um, really set yourself apart from the rest if you take really good care of your customers, right? And, and it's super valuable. So I love that you and your team focuses on that as well. We're trying our best. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because I know that um, we talked a little bit about this, but are you still investing in real estate? If so, what do you like? What are some things that you notice with today's market and um, any any sort of value bombs you could share with the audience about that? Totally. Haven't bought anything in over a year. Um, I put in an offer last week, so still looking. Um, the offer was a seller finance offer, so I think that is a very valuable tool right now in today's market. Um, pretty much, the it's an investment property, a single family I put an offer on, and uh, long story short, investors not going to buy it with today's bank rates because it's not going to cash flow. A and a uh, owner occupant can't get it because there's a lease on the place, so they can't move out within 30, 30 days. So pretty much like it has to be seller finance for it to go through. So didn't like the terms that the seller actually wanted, so we didn't go through with that. But um, right now we are looking for seller finance deals, and then I do long term rentals. Um, I do have one short term, but mostly focus on long term rentals here in Austin, Texas, and then also North Carolina. So. Looking at a couple more long-term rentals with creative finance, and then something we are doing is we have a big lot here in Austin, so we are going to be in the process of building ADU at some point. But we'll probably purchase it, uh, build a cash, and then we'll do a big refinance of the whole property once rates are where we like. Um, so, you know, kind of optimizing properties is where we're at, and then trying to add a few more. But we're not really going as heavy. We're really just stacking cash, and we're focusing on business at the moment. 
Yeah, it's a little little tougher for real estate investors right now. You've got to do some different things. I love the seller finance, and um, I've gotten to the habit on every property where I approach the owner, I'm going to ask them, you know, if they're if they're open to owner finance, just because you never know. Some, you know, some people won't even th- put interest in there, right? If they just are like, yeah, okay, and you can be surprised, right? It may just work out a lot better for you. So I love that, and and um, yeah, just keep keep on on pushing there, man. It's uh, you know, it, it's it's just like everything. It will turn around, and uh, I can't wait for that to happen. But uh, yeah, as we're getting to the tail end of this interview, again, thank you so much for your time, Zach. I really have appreciated uh, this time as well as you know us us chatting in the past. Um, can I ask you to give us one book recommendation and one tech recommendation, either or? You can do multiple on those. Um, or, or just, you know, just one. I'll give tech recommendation. If you are doing anything with recruiting or sales or marketing, um, there is a tool called video ask. So I do it for all my interviews. I do it for collecting testimonials. Um, pretty much it's uh, face to face video interaction. So I can post pre recorded videos of myself talking to the camera or even doing something creative, like walking through a scene or anything like that. The sky's the limit, but you can use it for onboarding, and it's just a really interesting tool. But the person will give replies for uh, if they have any questions about, like about the position or if they're onboarding, like "Hey, meet so and so." We have a as a meet the team option as well. So I do a pre-recording, introduce myself, I pass it to my team member, they pass it to their next team member, and there's so many different options in there. I think even coaches can do that as well. You can take payments through it. You can set up Calendly links. Um, so I think that's the biggest tech thing I would suggest, especially making your if you have a personal brand and coaching, anything like that, really connecting with people. I think it's a great platform to use. So that is called Video Ask. But how to pick a book? Let me look at my bookshelf here. I'm going to go with The Gap and the Gain. I know a lot of people like that book. It's a, it's a great book just to practice gratitude and um, appreciate the journey. Yeah, I love that recommendation. I just finished it not too long ago. And this conversation with you has actually reminded me a lot of Who Not How by the same authors, right? So um, had you read that book and and would you give that five-star review as well? Absolutely. Great book. And um, they have a new book out. Is that that correct? Let's see. There's the Gap in the Game, Who Not How, and yes, they do. 10X is easier than 2X. I did read that one also. I was going to make sure I was correct. Uh, Yeah, it's on my my kitchen table. I haven't started reading that yet, but I, I purchased it. I think anything they do, and then I, I just like through that book, I think, or one of maybe it's the gap in the game. I now am, you know, understand that Dan Sullivan wants to do a book like every month or something like that. So that he has a ton of short books out there. So those are all okay. on my wish list now because I just love the way he thinks. And so super excited to dive in those. And again, as we're wrapping up, how can our audience support you? Is, it, can, is there any type of deal markets that they can bring to you? Um, you know, any way they can support you and how, you know, what is, how could they connect with you? What would be best? Yeah. I'm most active on Instagram at Zach.crocked. Um, I do a little bit of everything. So if you want to talk real estate in Austin or Western North Carolina, happy to talk about that. Happy to help any way I can. And I'm always hiring. So if you're looking for a position in management or leadership, uh, I'd love to talk to you about working at photo meals. I love that. And um, now, do you is that the name of the website, photomules.com? It is, photomules.com. I'm not sure when this is going to be aired. We're about to do a total website makeover, so please excuse us as we're under construction. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. All right, well, thank you so much again, Zach. Like I said, really appreciate you, appreciate your time. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So thank you all, you know, to everybody listening and watching for, yeah, checking out another episode of The Gentle Art of Crushing It. Please reach out to Zach, you know, today. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of The Gentle Art of Crushing It. It was an amazing episode. We know we sure learned a lot and we hope you did as well. We want to take a second and thank you so much for viewing or listening to this episode. And please just know that we only ask for one favor, and that is to make this life magnificent. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.